Hello class and welcome to Bible. I just want to zoom in on this song and talk to God above. Let's sing this song. I know it's a favorite for several of you. Ready? Together. Did you ever talk to God above? Tell him that you need a friend to love. Pray in Jesus' name, believe him that God answers prayer. Have you told him all your cares and woes? Every tiny little fear he knows. You can know he'll always hear. And he will answer prayer. You can whisper in a crowd to him. You can cry when you're alone to him. You don't have to pray out loud to him. He knows your thoughts. On a lofty mountain peak, he's there. In a meadow pie stream, he's there. Anywhere on earth you go, he's been there from the start. Find the answer in his word, it's true. He'll be strong because he walks with you by his faithfulness. He'll change you to God answers prayer. Oh, yes, he answers prayer. Do you need a friend today? Do you need a friend today? Look at this one here. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Oh, and thou is our shield. Thou is our defender. Thou is our solace, our comfort, our everything. Jesus, he's the one. He is the one. How about our Bible verses? Do we know that, that all right? 
Are we ready for our Bible verses? I'm going to give you a peek at it right now as we look at the good book, the Word of God. Okay. And here are our Bible verses, John 16, 7 through 13. Let's go ahead and say them. We are going to have a test. We're going to review. But we're also going to have these that could show up on your test all the way through verse 12, and then we'll add verse 13 for next week. So make a note of that. Ready, begin. John 16, 7 through 13. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. John 16, 7 through 13. Oh, this Holy Spirit of God, when he is come, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you in all truth. He will be a comforter to you. That's what Jesus is saying. And in this Bible, you see how they're read? That means Jesus is saying, these words. Let's try it again. John 16, 7 through 13. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth that is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin, because they believe not on me of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. A judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. John 16, 7 through 13. The Holy Spirit does not like to speak of himself, but always to glorify the Father, same as the Son. Glorify the Father, which is in heaven. And so I hope you know those verses by now and have them down. Practice, practice, practice. The, the ones that um, didn't quite do as well on their, their quiz as they'd like to, Please practice uh, and say them every day, several times, and you will be able to do it and do a super job on that. So we're going to review a little bit for our test now. So you listen very carefully and take notes of some of the things that I asked you today, because those are the kinds of things that will show up on your test. So you listen very carefully. And so let's go ahead and review for our test today. I'm just going to ask you questions today and you listen very carefully. For well, these are the kinds of things that you will see and I will ask you for that test. Going back to the life of Paul and all the things that we have talked about the last days and weeks, I want you to know those, all right? One of the questions that I've asked you already is there was a certain area where where uh, Paul and Silas had preached to the people of Berea. It was actually Berea. And when he got there, the people listened carefully. And they did something that all of us should do. What did they do? What did they do? Would you be able on a test to write a few sentences about this and explain to me what they did? What did they do? What do they do, Nick? What do they do, Alice? What do they do, Jocelyn? What do they do, Naomi? Emma, what do they do? 
Chloe, what do they do? Michael, what do they do? Logan, Colin, everyone, Camden, everyone, Mia, everyone. What did they do? Did you say, even if I didn't say your name, did you say that they searched the scriptures to see that what Paul was telling them was the truth? They searched the scriptures daily to see that what they were teaching, what Paul and Silas were preaching was indeed the truth of God, was true. And so you should have written or said something like that. And on your test, you, you'll want to be able to tell me about that. The people of Berea were very open to the word of God. And whenever Paul worked at his trade, uh, wherever he worked, uh, wherever he went and he preached, he did some work to earn a little income. What was his job? He was what? And did you say that he was a tent maker? He made tents and sold them. The people on the island of Melita believed that Paul was a god. Why? Why did they believe that he was a god? Remember what happened to him? He was bitten by a snake and did not die. Is that what you said? When Paul preached at Mars Hill, this was in Athens, he talked about an altar that he had seen in the city. What was this altar? This was the altar and the inscription on there said the altar of the what? And I want you all to say together the unknown God to the unknown God. There was this altar and there was an inscription there and that's exactly what it said. And after being arrested in Jerusalem, Paul was sent by ship where? He said, I'm gonna send you somewhere else to also, but we're not gonna try here, we'll try you somewhere else. Where did they send him? Yes, they sent him to Rome. And when the people of Ephesus got saved and right with the Lord, they destroyed thousands of dollars worth of what? Yes, did you say magic books or books about magic? Demetrius was a silversmith and he was in Ephesus and he sold uh, these, these, these idols actually. Why was there such a riot against Paul? It was over what? Yes, it was over the goddess of Diana. See, Diana was one of the gods, one of the main gods that they worshiped and they sold ones made out of silver and they made money and Demetrius did not like this. Let's see. How about this? Paul and Silas got out of prison at Philippi when what happened? What special thing happened? That's right. God sent an earthquake. Did you say that? God sent an earthquake. The Holy Spirit came to live inside believers on what special day? And ever since then, the Holy Spirit has lived in all believers, those that believe and put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. What was that special day called? That's right. Pentecost. Everyone say Pentecost. Capital P-E-N-T-E-C-O-S-T. -E -E Pentecost. And remember fire on their heads that day? Now before then, the Holy Spirit only indwelled certain ones that God chose, special prophets of God. David, uh, in the Bible, he was anointed with the Spirit of God on him too. It's people like that. But not everyone got, got the Spirit on them. Paul and Silas, let's see, uh, I already asked you about, about getting out of prison. What else could I ask you? Oh, when Paul preached a powerful sermon in Jerusalem at Pentecost, how many people believed that day? And the Bible says they were added that day, what? 3,000 souls, 3,000 people. 
When the people of Lystra were convinced that Paul was a fake, what did they do? What did they do? It was in Lystra. They weren't very nice to him in Lystra. In Lystra, they did what to him? They what? They stoned him and left him for dead. They just left him there. They stoned him, left him for dead, but he wasn't really dead. But he was, he was still for a long time. He finally came to. Yes. Probably just got knocked out and they thought he was dead. On the day of Pentecost, 120 believers were given what special ability? Yes, they were able to speak in foreign languages. That's right. They could, they could speak in another language. When Paul healed a crippled man in Lystra, the people considered Paul and Barnabas to be what? Yes gods but more specifically what gods which gods did they think they were what did they call them yes mercury and jupiter what are they mercury and jupiter mercury was a god jupiter was another god and they called them mercury and jupiter when paul preached a powerful sermon in jerusalem at pentecost um, see, I think I asked you that one about the 3,000 souls getting saved. Uh, how about this? When Paul was on his way, where he saw this bright light and he actually was converted to Christ. Uh, he was Saul. He was changed to Paul and he got saved. He saw the light, as we say. And it was on the road to Damascus. Damascus is where he was going. That's right. Let's see. While in Antioch, which is also called Asia Minor, Paul told the Jews, since you refuse to believe in Jesus the Messiah, we're now going to go and tell them instead. Who? Yes, the Gentiles. There were Jews and there were Gentiles. So they went and said, we're going to tell the gospel to the Gentiles because they were refusing the message of Christ. Now, Paul also saw, but he escaped from Damascus, right? When his friends did what? How did they help him escape? Because everybody knew who he was. He was famous. How did he escape? not be found. That's exactly right. What did they do? They lowered him down the wall in a basket is what they did so that he could get away. When the church leaders needed helpers to give the widows the right amount of food, who were chosen to help the widows? And even today, this is a job that various ones have in the church. It's an office of the church today. Yes, the deacons are the ones that help the poor, help the widows, and help the orphans as well. All right. It was where that Christians were first called Christians. Yes. It was in Antioch. They were first called Christians or little Christs, followers of Christ. We're like little Christs, aren't we? We're a little bit, hopefully. If you know the Lord, you're a little bit like Jesus, aren't you? But we're little. We're not like, we're not as, we're not nearly like Jesus. But we're little Christs. We have a little bit, right? We actually have all of them in us through the Holy Spirit, but we're becoming more and more like him. So we're little Christs. All right. Now Paul preached. What other notes do I have written down here for you? We talked about a lot of different people in the, um, 
in the Bible and in our stories. And there were different people that we talked about. Oh, we talked about Stephen, and we talked about the king uh, of, of Rome during that time, and the different ones that travel with Paul. You need to know the difference between all these people and getting all the people's names right. So study those and go back and think about the stories or rewatch the stories. Rewatch some of the review times that we've had too the last few days and look at those. For example, who went on the first missionary journey with Paul? He was unhappy and so he left at Perga and he went back home. Who was it that did that? And did you say John Mark? John Mark is right. Who was the wife, Queen Bernice? He was his wife. Bernice was his wife. And he heard Paul give his defense. And he said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Who said that? And yes. It was Agrippa, it was King Agrippa that said that. He was afraid, but even though he was afraid, he went to see Paul, then Saul, in Damascus after he had lost his eyesight, and he helped Paul, who was Saul at that point. Who helped him? Did you say, Ananias, good job. Give yourself a pat on the back if you did. That just now. When Jesus went back to heaven, he promised to send who to take his place? Who? Who would be there? And our verses have been talking about this that we've been memorizing too. Yes, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Who was the doctor that went with Paul on his second journey? And he actually wrote two books of the Bible. His name was Luke. Luke wrote the book of Luke and he wrote the book of Acts. Who befriended Paul when he was a young Christian and went with them on his first missionary journey? Who was the first one to befriend Paul and went with them on the first journey? And did you say Barnabas? Barnabas was the first one. Remember, the others didn't trust him at first, and he went with them on his first journey. Now, remember, Silas went with them the second time after Barnabas left and went with John Mark. You see, they, they split up, and there were two teams giving the gospel after that. And so at that point, Silas went with Paul, and Barnabas took John Mark. But on the first journey, the first one, when he was a young Christian still, to befriend Paul was Barnabas. So remember that. And so who went with Paul on his second journey? Silas. That's right. Silas. So on the first journey, Barnabas went with Paul. On the second journey, Silas went with Paul. And let's see. Who joined Paul on his second missionary journey? Um, let's see. In the town of Philippi. And who was, oh, who was put in prison with Paul? Silas, and they were in the prison at Philippi, and they were singing and doing all of that there. Who also joined Paul on his second journey, um, but he, and he was like a son to Paul, and Paul wrote letters. He actually wrote two letters to him, and he was a young man. He loved him like a son, and his name was Timothy, raise your hand if you said Timothy, good job. Timothy was like a son to Paul. We don't know of any son he had, but so Timothy was like that son to him. And let's see. 
just after Jesus ascended to heaven, two angels promised that Jesus would do what? You know, he's going to prepare a place, but don't worry. What did the angels tell them? He's going to come again. That's right. Jesus would come again. He could come today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, it's going to be a glorious day. Now, just be, let's see. Just before Jesus went back to heaven, he told his disciples to be what? In Acts chapter 8, he said this. You need to be, you're going to stay here, and you need to be what for me? You need to be witnesses for me. Everyone say witnesses. Witnesses. Every one of us should be witnesses for Jesus, for God, for the gospel. Do well and study this. Who was the seller of purple that was baptized? What was her name? Lydia. Yes, and she sold this, this dye to dye clothes. It was expensive to dye clothes back then, and you could get good money for it. And her name was Lydia, and she was one of the first Christians as they journeyed. A lot of people rejected the truth, but she and others in her family accepted the truth of the message of God through Paul and the others there that were helping. Well, I hope you were listening carefully today, doing a super job. I want you to think about that Jesus is your friend, okay? Jesus is your friend through all the hurts, through all the sorrows, through all the trials, temptations, maybe to cheat or to steal, or to have a bad temper, or have a bad, remember to pray. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Whatever heartache you might have today, be like this boy. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's do that now. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be with us and help us all to be like this boy who trusts you who's depending on you, and through it all, help us, be with us, be near to us. Lord, I don't know what all the boys and girls are going through, but I know some of their families are going through hard things. I pray that you would be with them and heal them. Heal any hurts, heal any pains, heal any scrapes or bruises or hurts in their legs or twists or tears. Be with them in their work to do their best for you, even to the very end, and to not give up, not, sit, not say that they cannot, but that they can. They can keep going a little longer, even though it's hard and their teacher's not there with them. Help them to know how much I love them and think about them every day and pray for them. And if they don't think they have a friend, to know that I am their friend and that you are an even greater friend, that you are with them. Be with them all. Help them to know that great love. That no greater love have they, have Tim that laid down his life. You laid down your life for us. Help us to be like Paul, who was a witness for you wherever he went, to be a shining light. In a dark world, the world needs you, G Jesus. Might you help us to be like you, that we can be that light that you want us to be. Oh, may any boy or girl who doesn't know you today be their day of salvation, that they'd fall down and repent before you. Say, yes, Lord, I need you. I want you in my life. I've been holding back but I want you right now. I pray that be the truth, that we would go on, that we'd be kind to others, that we'd be kind to our sister and brother, even when it's hard, to be a light. Help us now, and I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Do well today and ask God to help you to be like Jesus.